In the following tutorial, we will cover how to insert prop models into your map. First, I want to cover the basics of what are prop models and the three basic types that you will often use inside Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Props inside CSGO or any other Hammer Source game are the 3D models that you will insert them and make the world more believable. So in this example, the prop models are the tables, the baskets, the fruit, the wooden logs, tires, garbage, and here the only props are the tree and the cinder blocks. So with the combination of BSP geometry, which will make up most of your map, you will use prop models to detail the rest of the world. Now the great thing about Counter-Strike Global Offensive, or most of the Hammer Source games, uh, you are given hundreds and hundreds of different prop models for you to use inside your map. So you don't have to create them yourself, you just browse through the available prop models within the map and uh, insert them into your map, creating the map a lot faster. There are three basic prop types inside Hammer Source that you will use to detail your map. Prop statics are the most common ones that you will use. These objects are static, they don't have any animation, they don't have any physics, and these are the most common ones that you will detail the world. They're very inexpensive to render, so you can use a lot of them in the map. Prop dynamic uh, can be animated, can be used within the input-output system, which is a scripting system inside Source. And prop physics have physics tied to each prop. That means you can touch them, you can shoot them, and they will react accordingly and move around. Now, since we're dealing with Counter-Strike Global Offensive, uh, you will want to use prop physics multiplayer to insert these props into your map. And I will show you how to do that. So the most common one you will use is prop static. Prop static are the least expensive ones. So you can use a lot of these in, inside your map. Prop dynamic are more expensive to render than prop static, but less expensive to render than prop physics. And prop physics are the most expensive to render because the position of each prop physics has to be calculated and it could eat into your performance of your map, especially for multiplayer. To insert props into your map is very simple. First you need to activate the entity tool and here on the right hand side you will see entities and under objects you want to choose which type of entity you want to insert. For us we will be dealing with prop static, prop dynamic and prop physics. So if you use the drop down menu we can scroll down to select prop static and I'm going to cover prop static first so we can go ahead and select it. You can also type in prop underscore and it will filter the available props uh, of what you type in. So once you have that selected, if you left click inside the perspective viewport, it will place a bounding red box. You can also place these props using the orthographic viewports, but I like using the perspective first and then uh, I can use the orthographic viewports to align the object itself. So right now this is just an entity and it has no model tied to this prop static. We need to enable the selection tool or shift S and then double click to go inside the properties. Here you can see that we have prop static under class selected. There are many properties that we can go through and define some of the way that this prop static would behave and render. But what we need the most is to define the world model. So what you want to do is you want to select the world model and either double click here on the world model or click browse right over here. Once you click Browse, Model Viewer Browser will open up. In here is where you would select the type of model that you want that prop static to be. Again, here you will find hundreds of different models that you can choose to insert into your map. The type of entity that you use to insert is very important because not all models that you find inside the Model Browser uh, will give you the ability to render that prop inside the world. What that means is is when we select our model that we want to insert as a prop static, we want to make sure that oh, clicking over into the info tab that it's available to be used as a static. Now most of these can be used as a static, but if you're using it as a physics or as a dynamic prop, you want to make sure that you click over and take a look if dynamic and physics has a check available to it. If it doesn't, then that model cannot be used as that prop type. 
So let's go ahead and uh, filter our props so we don't have to go through each and every single one. Uh, we want to filter and browse uh, by a specific prop that we are searching for. So let's filter and type in uh, desk. This will give us uh, a handful of desk model that we can use. So let's use this desk metal. In the preview window, if you left click and hold, you can rotate around the object. And if you right click and move forward or back, you can zoom in on this model. You can also click over to render and take a look at the wireframe. Uh, take a look at the collision model. Some models will also have different skins available to them. Uh, this will change the color and some of the texture elements of that model. And once you like what you see and that's the prop that you want to use, uh, go ahead and double click and click apply. It inserted the desk right where that red bounding box was and let's go ahead and close it. So now we have a prop static placed inside the map and what we want to do is we want to make sure that it's aligned to the floor. Let's go in orthographic viewport, let's zoom in and let's place it down right on the floor. If you can't quite place it down, you want to decrease your grid to something lower. Uh, this worked fine, but sometimes you'll need to uh, go very low, maybe all the way down to one to make sure that it's lined up to the ground floor. Uh, but then once you do, you wanna bump the grid back up to eight so you don't forget it. So now we want to position this desk somewhere more appropriate. So let's put it up against this wall. So I'm going to go in the top view and if I deselect the desk, uh, we can reselect it again by clicking on the desk itself or we can use the perspective viewport and select the desk here. To move the desk, all we need to do is once the desk is selected, we just left click, hold, drag and just position it where we want the desk to be. Here we are right up against this wall and uh, if we want to rotate, all we need to do is click again on the selected object and it will give you the option to rotate it. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate it 180 and position it right over here. And to deselect just click off of the prop somewhere in the world or you can uh, press escape. This will deselect it as well. So selecting the prop, left click, you can drag and move and then if you click it again you can rotate it. So once you have one prop inserted all we need to do is just select the prop that you already placed in the world, hold down shift, left click drag to duplicate. This will duplicate that prop over again. Then by double clicking on the prop we can go inside the properties, make sure that the world model is selected, click on browse and select the prop that you want to change it to. So here I uh, let's select file cabinet group, double click, click apply. We can see that it uh, replace the model and it's rotated and positioned to the ground uh, so we don't have to rotate every single time and we don't have to position it down and this is a really quick way of duplicating already placed props and just uh, detailing the world at a faster pace. To insert a prop physics we have to follow the same steps just changing the entity type to prop physics. So let's click over to the entity tool and instead of prop static, let's uh, select prop physics. Now, since we're dealing with Counter-Strike Global Offensive, which is primarily a multiplayer game, we want to select prop physics multiplayer. These props have been optimized for network online play. And this is the entity type that we want to use. So let's go ahead and insert our prop physics right in here switch to a selection tool and let's go ahead and choose our physics model. Let's go to browse. So I'm going to filter for trash. So here we have a regular trash can. Clicking over on uh, info we see that we have physics enabled. So let's go ahead and double click on the trash can and click apply. And here we have our trash can. Now let's make sure that we place it on the ground. Let's go into side view zoom in and place it right on the ground. Let's go to top view and put it right in the corner right here. If we jump in game and uh, we shoot this it should move around and uh, flip over. And for our last prop type uh, let's insert a prop dynamic. Now prop dynamics are very useful props 
because they can be named, they can be tied to another entity, uh, they can be animated and moved inside the map. So our prop statics, they're dead objects. They're very inexpensive to render and you wanna use them most of the time. But for times when you want to animate your object, to have them move, to have them affected or uh, set up an input output system where that object gets affected interactively inside your map, then you want to make sure that those prop types are prop dynamic. So a couple of examples of a prop dynamic, uh, for example on DS tech, this helicopter taken off, that's a prop dynamic. Or a more simpler example would be this rotating fan in D Inferno. Now to just insert that fan, it won't rotate all by itself. You would tie it to another entity type inside Hammer and then you would make that fan rotate and animate inside the editor. So let's go ahead and click over to prop entity and let's select prop dynamic. Once we have it selected, uh, again click over to the perspective viewport, left click to place it, double click, and then world model, let's go to browse. Uh, we can use the clothesline. And if we zoom in, you can see that these clothes move and they're only prop dynamic. Uh, let's select something a little smaller. Now let's go ahead and double click and click apply. And we can see that these rags begin to kind of move. So let's uh, position them right over our doorway. Now you want to be careful when you create a new map, uh, you want to limit the amount of prop physics and prop dynamics that you use. One last thing that I want to kind of go over is the properties of each prop type. So if we go ahead and double click on the prop static, we can see that we have certain properties that we can change. We can define certain skins. If that prop has multiple skins, we can set up collisions or we can turn them off. And we can also have a different fade distance. For example, if we want this object to fade and not render at a certain distance, uh, let's say the player will never see this uh, desk and at a certain distance, this would not render this desk and improve in performance. If you click over to flags, uh, prop statics don't have any flags because they're just static objects. And if we click over to prop physic or a dynamic, under flags you have a lot more options and checkboxes that you can uh, check on and off for that prop. And for prop physics you have a lot more to choose from. You also have a little more extra properties for prop physics and prop dynamic such as parenting, naming, uh, running entity scripts. Now for prop dynamic this is a very simple example and uh, this is not the best example to use for prop dynamic. I'll do a later tutorial on how to set up movement and animation using prop dynamic and how you can set them up using the input and the output system and uh, have a more complex behavior. This was a very simple example uh, and not the best way to demonstrate what a prop dynamic does. So I'm going to ahead and delete this. Now what we want to do is we want to now jump in and just kind of take a look at how the prop physics behaves and just kind of see what these uh, elements look like inside the game. Now I'm just going to jump inside the game uh, so don't worry how I'm actually compiling and running the game because in a couple short tutorials I'll show you exactly what you need to do to compile and run the game effectively. Here we are inside the compiled map. Here's our file cabinet, here's our desk and here is our physics garbage can. In the next tutorial, you will learn how we can insert lights inside the map and light our environment.